Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our techniques video. Uh, just a little background, I live in New Zealand, two small islands in the South Pacific Ocean and these technique videos are for members of our craft club at Art of Craft. But some like this one I am going to make public for all the subscribers we have to our channel all around the world. I have a warning for you because there's a lot of it's a long video with a lot of talking in it because I'm trying to show you different things you can do with your products and with these particular dies. But I will have links down below the video where you can skip to the portion that you might be interested in. This is your it's not about the butterfly pack. It includes Tatted Angels products in the chalkboard, the Glimmer Glam, and the Glimmer Glaze. It has Perfect Pearl Mists, and it has the Perfect Pearl Marker Powder in the powder form. I have pre-cut and, and sometimes embellished some of these butterflies and some of the dragonflies. They will be in fabric and glitter cardstock, ordinary cardstock, metal, acetate. So, we, and there are a few extra bits and pieces in there just for you to experiment on. I've done this in case some of you haven't got the dies, but it's always good for you to be working on exactly the same paper and card and metal that I am, so I know that you're going to get the same results as what I'm going to show you. The one, people that have taken the alcohol ink option, there'll be three alcohol inks in there. These will be in two brighter colours and one pale colour and that is in case you have not got any of the um, alcohol ink blending solution because you can always use your lighter colours to help blend the other colours when you're creating your masterpieces. The alcohol will produce effects like these, the fabric you can go as far as you like to to create different techniques like these. I'll tell you more about that when I show you that section. Your Perfect Pearls and or your Viva Decor, Decor Ink of Gold, which is not in this pack, but I still will be showing you the techniques. We'll create these effects. Uh, you layered, there's acetate in there, so you can create layered butterflies like this, whether you want them pastel or the very rich, they are within the pack as well. And the dragonflies um, are in there as well. And you can see how these are layered. It looks very nice when you layer them. Again, I've layered these with acetate. And that's fun. Um, and you can see this one's made with metal. So there's lots to cover. It's going to be a very long video with lots and lots of talking. The very first thing I'm going to do is show you the cutting process. And then we'll go on to all the different techniques. Okay, I thought I'd show you the cutting process. I'm using the Big Shot and I'm cutting out Tim Holst layer dies here. This is the butterfly one. I'm embarrassed enough to say that I have made a lot of these and so many that everybody's bought out my stock of these dies but, and they won't be back into stock until after Christmas. And I do have some of the B one left, which is lots of fun too. Um, but the dragonfly we're working on today and the layered butterfly, they're gorgeous. You'll love them if you buy them. If not, well, you've still got the pack. Okay, so we're using the Sizzix Big Shot. I've seen a lot of people cut and very carefully measure out their work. And I'm not like that at all. So you're not going to get precise out of me. I line these up on the piece of paper to see how many will fit on my piece of paper. And actually in this case, it will cut four, depending on your thickness of your card. You've always got to be aware of the thickness of your car, but you've got to remember you're working with these thick steel wool dies, so they'll cut out more um, than um, your little thin spellbinder dies. So all I do is I put my butterfly, I cut one, and then I put it on there. Now you can go around the edges if you want, but basically I just hack this out. I make sure that my paper is nice and easy on there. I've got four pieces of paper on there, and I cut out conserving enough so that I don't muck it up and shoot my butterfly out over the edge which I sometimes do but I still use them and then I go on to cut out 
the next one making sure my paper is even etc until I've fitted as many on this piece of paper as I possibly can I don't go and cut it into pieces it's just that's too much effort for me just to cut it out a second time so that's how I do that uh, you just line it it's simple line it up on the die where you've cut out put it in there and you all must you all will have um, done this a million times if you've got so this big shot put it in there without the platform and roll it on through and you will have cut out four of these you have to emboss them singly obviously because you won't get the proper embossing on them but it's a simple case of placing it in the embossing folder that comes with the die closing it up and putting it through your machine using the plate the base plate so you just put it in there and roll it on through and there you have your embossed butterfly now um, the, the, this actually has an actual shape here um, that's different because this is a it hasn't got even edges so if you happen to put your butterfly through and you can see how this overlaps here it doesn't really matter it still comes out beautifully and you also have to be aware if you're doing something like one of these which has a different exterior where I've got metal one side and paper the other you would have to decide how you want whether you wanted your embossing embossed or debossed and make that decision about where you wanted to place your cut out but if you're just using ordinary card you can just decorate one side or the other so you can do four probably more with the steel rule dies if you want to cut it like that now when I'm cutting acetate like these and embossing them I generally only do two um, not so much on this you can get away with the butterfly but when it comes to doing the dragonfly it has some very very fine pieces in here that can get caught in your die it won't harm it you can just pick them out but you don't want to rip its little feet off um, so two with the acetate you're putting it through and this acetate it's really just packaging um, this is the packaging of one of the Tim Holtz dies and I just grab it off any food packets anything that I've got so I can use it because I love using um, layering it and using it in all sorts of artwork the metal uh, the single single pieces of metal without backing um, you can put several through with the butterfly you have to be careful I do them singly with the dragonfly because again you've got these little pieces in here that um, will get caught in your die now when you're doing your fabric ones This is just denim. Do the same thing. Get your old denim pants out. Um, find a place. I've just hacked up squares in this case. Put it through. When you're doing your fabric ones, you'll find that it'll catch a little in places. Just snip the threads. So put it through. You can go backwards and forwards if you wish. It's quite stable on there. you'll find that you'll get little threads like this that you can just snip off it's not a problem but the thing that you want to do in between cutting out your fabric ones you see all this fluff here you want to get rid of it if you don't get rid of this fluff it starts to get in there and, and when you cut with paper it'll go all over the place so make sure when you're cutting fabric that you take it away in between you can always get your die pick uh, if there's any bits but you can see how that's come up nice and clean if you continue to cut them over and over again you'll get a build up and it'll just be a bit of a mess won't ruin your die again because it's um, steel rule die but it gets messy and sometimes you get cotton caught down there so that is the cutting process okay when working with fabric 
and in this case I'm using denim. It's really quite exciting because you can use these for so many things and I'll tell you about that right at the end of the video. But I've used denim here. It's great with sticky back canvas. It's great with any fabric actually. Even though this is quite old worn denim, this will still emboss. The trick is, is you have to be able to get the pattern on there to make it stay. You can see here, um, if you... I hope, well, I hope you can see here where I have embossed this bit of den denim. Eventually, if you wash that, it would all disappear though, or, or it would slowly come out. So what you do, that as soon as you, when you have embossed it, you then take your, I'm using in this case black archival ink, because it's a permanent oil-based ink. So any permanent ink, one that's going to sit on top a little bit more, that's why I enjoy the, the oil one. And you take it and you put it over the top so you can bring that pattern out. Then even if your embossing disappears through washing or just through time, your pattern will always be in your work. So then it's ready for you to paint. So you can do that with any of your archival colours. You'll just get a different effect. You can also use uh, the light side of the denim rather than the dark side of the denim. I will have already done this for you. So the the Butterflies that you find in your pack will already have the archival ink on them. But the light denim also looks great. But you might decide, for whatever reason, something you're going with, you want to use a different coloured pad, you can to match up whatever you're making, whether it be for garment or a bag or decor. So you can do that. And that gives you your pattern, which you will then go on to decorate. So don't be afraid of using fabric. It's fun. Like I said, so much, so many things you can do with it. Just so that you're aware, I use both sides of this um, particular butterfly uh, as opposed to the picture that Tim Hull shows you. I think he shows you the version of it where it's like this particular one. And this is the reverse sides. And that's what I've used for the fabric so I can get all these details in it. If you look closely, one's embossed and one's debossed. This one doesn't show all those um, black marks, and this is what it looks like. I'll do it quickly on here so you can hopefully understand what I'm saying. This is the reverse side of your cutout that I've inked, and this is the other side. You can see you're getting a very different effect both very pretty. But one's embossed and one's debossed. I've used this particular way for the denim because we want to decorate this denim up. On this denim butterfly I'm going to be using out of the pack the Perfect Pill Mist Perfect Pill Powder and the Glimmer Glam. So the Glimmer Glam is a glitter paint and it creates a resist. It also creates a really terrific glue that's easy to apply as opposed to perhaps your little bottles of glue that you put on, water-based, and it, um, it can smear or you can get too much and you don't want it there. The Glimmer Glam spreads beautifully and has this quite a strong glue in it and it creates a nice glaze effect that I like. Okay, now your Perfect Pearls. If you want to paint fabric, this is the product you need. These are both put out by Ranger and this is the Perfect Fabric Medium. You mix it with the Perfect Pearl, Pearl Pigment Powders, which these are, and it creates luminous fabric paints. That will, as long as you have washed your dressing out of whatever fabric you're using and you apply, you'll then be able to wash your garment after that. So you can do that. In a case like this, I don't require it, uh, the fabric medium. I'm just going to uh, be using this as decoration. Um, so I don't, I'm just going to mix the Perfect Pearls with water. The Perfect Pearl has a binder in it anyway, which may, helps it adhere to paper or to fabric or 
what but remember you whatever but you remember you've got to use this fabric medium if you want it for perhaps making quilt making or making a bag that you or shoes that will get wet you really want to use this perfect fabric medium your perfect pearls mist also has a binder in it um, so that helps it cling we'll go through that with other butterflies as we go through or other dragonflies whatever you're working on Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're just going to mix our perfect pearls. Remember to knock it down because if you open up the wrong way you'll have powder everywhere. We're going to take a portion out, just a little scoop of it out, and mix it with a little water. And create a fabric paint. You can put more in there, more water in there, more powder in there. Um, just to get it to the consistency that you like. Is that right? And then because we've got these lines on here, it's actually easy to choose where we would like our fabric paint to go. So you just colour in the lines, go around however you like. You can, uh, if you find you don't think it's deep enough or you want to create a shadow, you can wait for that to dry and then go back over it again with another layer to make it deeper. But you'll have to wait for it to dry, let it dry first, because as this dries, it becomes shinier as well and it sets into the fabric, allowing you to go to a second layer. So you can do it like that. Now, this one here, you can see here on here where I have decided I'm going to put on. If you go over the lines and create this kind of messy effect here as opposed to being very precise, don't worry about it. Because all you're going to do is once you've done that, no matter how much mess you've created, you can always go back and get an archival pad or whatever permanent ink you're using and just go over the top again and bring those details back in. It might look a bit messy for a minute, But just go back, get a bit of your fabric paint, and tidy up your lines. That one was a little wet when I did that, because that's me. I'm always doing slapdash. With your, also with the archival ink, you'll want to dry it on the um, butterfly before you start painting again. Okay, the second layer we're going to do, and you can see I've done it on this one, just get rid of that, you don't want to waste it like this by the way, use it on a card or use it to make something else, is you're going to choose whatever colour perfect pearl mist I've got, all the colours through these packs are going to be different, you're not necessarily working on the same, using the same colour palette as I am, but they will still all work beautifully, and you're going to take the lid off, and you're going to delve down in there and get some of that mica powder on your brush. And then you'll go over the top, creating a shadow or creating whatever shape you'd like over the top. And that'll give you two colours. You can see I've done it on this, where I've gone over the top of my perfect pearls and created another layer. You can take this as far as you like. You might have... Um, other paints or other perfect pearls in your stash at home and you can paint it even more. Don't be too worried about where you put the paint. Do a base coat and then just start bringing extra colours out from the centre. But it creates lovely luminous effects for you. If you have a mini mister at home, these are also put out by Ranger, but any spray bottle and with your perfect pearls you can mix another make yourself another perfect pearl mist to do that you'll take your mini mister fill it up about so far take a little scoop of the powder out um, actually I'll take that back what you'll do is you'll fill it up to about that far then put your powder in and then put more water on top up to about that level and give it a good shake you can also put in re -inkers, so you can create a, a custom colour your mica reflect will always be the orange, but say if I wanted to put in a green here, I, it, I would have a green colour with the mica being orange spread across my page. So you can do that. Don't let anybody tell you 
or any um, company tell you that these won't block. They all block. If they've got mica powder in them, the chances are at some stage you're going to grab this spray and not shake it properly and that mic is going to shoot up into your bottle and it's going to block your nozzle. Now you have two choices. You can do what I do when that happens. I just get out my brushes and start applying it with the brush. I find that it uses less anyway because I don't get so much overspray. Or you can get yourself some the air that you use, canned air that you use to clean up computers and you can take your lid off pull this apart because it'll pull off usually it's in here where the blockage is you'll see if it's in this part um, and you put it put that air right on the nozzle on that end and right on inside here and you give it a blast and it will shoot it out sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't you can leave them to soak and you do all sorts of things but sometimes they just won't work so when you run out of a spray keep your lids if it's not blocked so just remember that <laughs> these ones actually have been the, the best for me believe it or not you think it would have would be the worst one to block up but of all them um, this for whatever reason doesn't block as much as my other sprays that have mica powders now you don't have the same problem if you haven't got anything um, floating in there like mica powder if it's just a straight spray it's it's not going to block it takes more to make it block than that but these and the chalk sprays that you're going to be using like these they all have something suspended in them that will make them block if you don't shake them up enough you can do all sorts of things with this butterfly you can bling it you can put pearls on it you can just take this and you can stick it to whatever i often the old jeans like these cut the pockets off some of them will use them in your 12 by 12 layouts but they make fun bags too they look, even if you're just sticking this onto an onto your jeans um, that you're going to wash remember then use this i don't even sew these on obviously those existing jeans it makes it hard so i just use fabric glue and glue them down um, that's lots of fun you can make a any old jeans you can even use cut up the seams of your pants to make the straps that you so you can make a bag so don't throw those jeans away the glimmer glam you can use it on these but you can also just use it by itself and you'll get a it's hard to tell if you can see that but these look fabulous when you just put it on remember this is different it's not like using stickles and things this is a bit more booty in the glue or the glaze that the, the um, glitter is suspended in and they look great and I haven't tested whether you can wash this or not to be honest with you but all I'd do is if it ran out of glitter was put some more on so I wouldn't be worried about that it's quite quite tough stuff it's not going to come off in, in two twos and that looks great and you just apply that I use a fan brush but you can use any brush you just apply that by scooping it out mixing it around and if I wanted to say put it on this one you could go right over the top but we might do it over this one this is a blue one and you just sweep it over the top and you'll get all that yummy glitter onto your work looks fabulous of course you don't have to put it all over you can just scoop some out and say just tart up your work by putting a little bit around the edges if you're using the darker colors because I'm not sure which one you've got in your pack um, edging it looks really good this particular one is pink but if you put it on you won't get the pink showing through you're just going to get those nice bits of glitter on there and they're really pretty and bright so then you take your butterfly, use your fabric glue, 
and stick it to your pants, to your purse, to whatever, and they look gorgeous. Another thing to do with your Glimmer Glam is this looks fabulous trailed along tulle. If you want to make a piece of artwork for a girl's room, just get some tulle. Arrange it into a frame or even just free-formed on the wall. Trail this over. It will go on much better than most glimmers because it's got this thicker glaze and it'll give you a wonderful effect. You could even do that and then put beautiful butterflies um, in corresponding colours to your decor um, onto the chill. It's a neat effect. You can even put it straight onto, if you're brave enough, straight onto paint and wallpaper because it'll still give you that glitter trail. You will have a little bit of resist in there. I'll show you what I mean by that. When you use this glitter glam onto wallpaper, wood, cardstock, fabric, you can it has a resist effect. This back here is has been some glaze I've put on there. It also has resist effect. That means that when you put it on, the second that you bring once it's dried, the second that you try and bring colour over the top, it will show the colour beneath. So the, in this case you're seeing the card that's below. This is just a very crude demonstration of what it does. If you're going to use it on, say, wallpaper to create a trail um, that you're going to put something on, which would look lovely in a little girl's room, you're going to create a resist on the wallpaper so you get this kind of clear look and the colours underneath becoming a bit stronger. It will still look great. Can you imagine having a trail like this going along a wall, going towards curtains, plain curtains that you may have put butterflies on, um, some pretty butterflies on and all sorts of colours um, that could go down, you could put these down the edge of your curtains and then you could have a trail of this going along the wallpaper and these butterflies sitting on top of it look absolutely gorgeous. You can do the same with chill and get chill. This glides onto chill beautifully. It gives you a much better coverage. You don't have to worry about getting too much glitter in one place and just looks absolutely beautiful on chiffon or chill um, so that you can make wall art and attach butterflies to it, dragonflies, whatever. You don't have to use the pink colours. There's lots of colours that you can get that are nice and strong and beautiful if you were doing it in a different way or wanted to do it with dragonflies. So try that, it's fun. But in the meantime, this is what your butterfly should look like in whatever colours that you've chosen to use.